My name is Leslie Linball, though in the online world I'm known as 1% Yellow. This video was created for Dr. Alec Koros's ECI831 class and reflects my attempt to become a social artist. Through this project, I hope to connect individuals from my undergraduate university, the Augustana campus of the University of Alberta, with individuals from the University of Mary Washington, who are exploring the possibilities for liberal arts education online. The point of contact between these two schools is their mutual membership in the Council of Public Liberal Arts Colleges, or COPELAC. In part six of this series, we'll take a look at the skill that I value the most from my own experience in liberal arts education, the power of reflection. A key act, aspect of active learning is um, that you are also being reflective as you're learning. So it's not just running around and having experiences of community, of being able to be self-directed or whatever, but that you're also reflecting on those experiences. It's called an action reflection cycle. I'm going to get all theory on you. First, my misgivings about reflection. It's got too much especially in my own discipline, it's got too much of these connotations of, uh, of, a, of a mirror, you know, or a water that, you know, you look there and you reflect back. I don't like it. I don't like that because it's too passive, which also means, of course, that nobody has any responsibility for it. They don't take into account what contributions they make to it, that they maybe have a different view than other people have. The critical reflection, so it's not just any random reflection, uh, but that you're actually introducing uh, an element of criticality or critical thinking, um, which I think is a hallmark of a liberal education. For those of us working in liberal arts, the notion that students need to be given an opportunity um, to reflect upon the work they're doing in very explicit ways. Um, I mean, we, we reflect, whether we realize it or not, we reflect in tacit ways all the time on what we're doing, but that to get at sort of a metacognitive stuff, we have to ask students to take almost a step outside of the work they're doing and reflect upon process, um, not just create product, but reflect upon po process. Courses that are based on this style of learning, action and action is taken, so paper is written or um, a community service placement takes place, and then there is a necessary component of reflection, wherein you think on what you have done and what you could have done differently and um, reflect as well on how that ties into the course material and then based on this reflection you take further action or maybe if it all went horribly wrong you choose to take no more, no more action. And so that's reflection on sort of that theoretical or content level but I think it's also being self-reflective so that we're learning also to analyze and understand ourselves and how we and all of our foibles also impact or influence how we're engaging the world, how we are approaching certain topics or certain kinds of conflict or, or, or that kind of thing. So, but the reason I use self-reflection or sometimes I'll talk to students about selves reflection is that the only way we can reflect upon ourselves is by uh, looking at other people and they reflect back to us. Wendell Berry said, you, you don't go to yourself to learn how to be a better person. You have to go to other people to learn how to be a better person. I try to use that kind of image in terms of reflection for my students as well. I mean, reflection, if I put community as like community begets interaction and you hope that interaction begets reflection. But as far as I'm concerned, it should be the, uh, a part of, of any liberal arts uh, course to lead students to reflect on what they do and to bring their own knowledge and their own uh, experiences in line with what's being taught. It's obviously easier in a philosophy course, especially in a political philosophy course, than it might be in a biology course. Right? For Sarah Ross, this is the aha moment when she is able to make a connection between something she has learned and another aspect of her life be it work-related or related to some other learning in some way. Reflection, and specifically critical reflection, encourages students and probably professors as well to think about what it is they're doing, why they're doing it, how to do it better, how to, um, and not better as in get a better grade or whatever, but better as in more meaningfully or more impactfully. I don't know if those are words. <laughs> Look at, at what you did and tell me how you felt that is more important than good. What matters more than the what is the why. You know, what it means, why, why people have found these interesting questions, why they remain relevant today. You've got to make sense out of what you're dealing with, and it takes time to process that. 
It takes time to think it through. If community is the core bit to get everybody up and running, reflection is the core bit you take away from it as your own. You can work in a counter-hegemonic way so that you're not just having to buy into the hegemonic discourses but are able to actually critically analyze those and then say, well, that, that doesn't quite make sense or no, that does make sense because it serves their interests or whatever. Having students understand the value of reflection is not, I mean, that is not just a four-year kind of skill. I mean, if, right. if, you have, yeah. if you have the ability to, you know, critically and deeply look at the, the way that the world around you is communicating with you or is affecting you and, you know, in terms of mm -hmm. your thought process and, and everything, I mean, you're just, you're setting yourself up for a much a much more enjoyable life, I would say, if you can critically yeah. analyze those those aspects of your life that are making you unhappy or uncomfortable or angry. It it's a way to turn it's a way to turn this art from an artificial learning thing into a real learning. It's uh, is one of the ways I look at it.